and always a reminder for myself and abduku la jisu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal and by the grace of Allah we are still in existence. If we understand in this time of what's happening that everything has to be understood through energy and that there's an energy battle taking place from whatever level of people's belief and understanding that the abundance of negative energy however that energy is moving. If you have any spiritual understanding you know that all this electricity and energy is from the world of jinn and understanding the movement of negative energy and with our existence what was not once known and then became hidden by science and what they believe they understand of insan and medications and sicknesses. Easiest way to understand what's happening now is there's a tremendous flow of negative energy. And this negative energy is trying to enslave insan, to overtake insan. As soon as the negative energies come and they come too much and too close, insan becomes diseased. That Allah in this creation of perfection that when this energy comes we are an energy being. When we are producing a tremendous amount of light and blessings, wa lakar karamna bani adam that we have a light and a gift that can't be understood. And all of creation jealous from that reality means there's a gift within insan of lights and powers and energies that Allah has given to them. And when a negative energy comes towards insan, it can make insan to be diseased and sickened and very subtle, very easy because the shield of men is weak. When an energy flows towards them it just begin to touch the surface of their being and their cellular level can be changed. Whether the men of science want to call it a radio signal, a radar signal, or Wi-Fi signal. These are energies and the effect of these energies on our energy being can be devastating. So what is occurring on earth is an energy battle. They try to hide it and make it like men of science talking about it's a sickness and a sickness is coming to you and now have fear. But those of belief they should have understood, no the dajjal is coming. And the armies of dajjal its majority are shayateen and the marada, the bad and disbelieving jinn. Yeah see like that they're… as they're going by they're very upset. <laughs> So means they, they want to enslave mankind and force their energy upon mankind and we talked about it in understanding computers and understanding technologies and understanding these realities. That we are a battery source, a power source that is a Divine gift and when they look to us they look at us as a battery that we will do favours for you so that you worship us knowing or unknowing. That everything will be facilitated through the jinn world. This electricity that moves onto the earth is them. They are the smokeless fire that Allah described, you are using a smokeless fire, the other fire is your combustion engine. This electrical energy that you use is a smokeless fire. You see the blue light and there's no smoke. 
They move through the signals, the wire transmissions, they move through cable, everywhere. As they want to come more into this world <coughs> and enslave mankind for their imam then they need higher and higher movement. It was not good enough at 92 baht, then they had dial up at 23k, then they had this and this and this till now there's a 5G signal being sent out. What? What's this khams? In the last days the importance of five and this signal that they're trying to broadcast out. What force does their energy when they begin to descend upon creation? What's the force and what's the effect at the cellular level of people? And does the energy hit people and make all their toxins and all their sicknesses come out? Every type of difficulty come out but we won't get into that debate of what's really happening from their medical standpoint. But what the believer should understand is that they're fighting with energy and they release frequencies. And we said before in other talks, Sayyidatan Wahidatan, Allah describes it's but one shout. And in the biblical times it was the shofar and the trumpet of Jericho that they blew the horn and the walls came down. They made seven tawaf and the Prophet of Allah blew a horn and the walls came tumbling. Means the most important power is the power of sound. And we don't understand it, we lost its understanding. We are only focusing on the world of form and disease from the world of form and the standpoint of form and the medical curing based on a form. And then they come and teach, well no, 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 that form is, is a result of what? It's a result of a sound. The sound that you emanate gives you the form. If somebody manipulates the sound, you can manipulate the form. Very easy, very simple. Just simplify it so that you can understand. <coughs> if somebody comes and has the ability to manipulate the sound in which you resonate and begin to send that frequency onto you and your body resonates at a certain frequency, they can begin to affect you at a cellular level where your cells they begin to die, they become mutated. As a result your body produces so many toxins and then your body tries to repair the toxins while it's still in a state of death and wreak havoc upon insan. And we said before last days all oh, their battles would be with sound. Machines that they would point towards buildings and buildings would collapse towards insan and they would cook from the inside out. Means that these are the shayateen and the shayateen will facilitate themselves through a physical modality and say, here point this machine at this building and you turn the knob, the building will go down. No, it's haqqaiq is that there's a being in there and that energy being will hit that and make its vibration to come down. So means then the people of tariqah and people of marifa, they have to understand. It's the sound in which you resonate in life. That ayat al kareem Bismillahir Rahmanir Qulin Qul ja al haq wa zahak al batil. In a batil qanun zahukan. This ayat al kareem is everything about this energy study. Qul ja al haq, Allah talking to Janab al haq, who al hayyu al qayyum. That when your truth of haq comes. Because you are from the soul that's high and it's qayyum. When your haqq moves and everything made from your haqq and I made every creation from haqq, Allah's coded word of saying, I made everything from you Prophet because it is the haqq of Allah 
Allah is not in the ocean of Hayy and Qayyum, Allah is beyond the ocean of creation. It's not polite to even think that Allah is in or anything like His creation. So Allah is describing Prophet in encoded ways of marifa that, oh my haqq, your hayy and qayyum, that wherever your haqq and your light goes, it will hit every batin and every falsehood. And truth and false, they don't come together. And by the way, falsehood is perishing zahuqa. You will obliterate everything false. Not the false think that they can obliterate the haqq. And people running think, oh my god, we're gonna die. No, the truth obliterates the false, not the false <laughs> obliterate the truth. But are we on the truth? Did we build our light to the way that Allah wanted it to be built, in, built? This is our goal in life was to make the haqq of our light to be powered. And the best power, most powerful power is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad No one else, don't waste the focus. There's no time anymore for debates of this or that. The focus is to bring the light of Sayyidina Muhammad on your soul. The durood al sharif, the salawats, the love, the actions of the Muhammadan way. You support it, you pray from it and its lights, you meditate upon it, you make your salawats with it and everything is, Ya Rabbi qulini kuntum tuhibun Allah fatabiyuni. I heard, Ya Rabbi, I'm fatabiyuni, I'm following with everything. I'm trying my best to bring this love and this reality. I make lots of salawats all day long. I accompany these lovers of that reality. I support and I do. I'm deep in that ocean of reality. Then you should know that Prophet described, you'll be with whom you love. So these are Ahbab and Nabi as soon as this haqq begin to enter into their hearts, enter into their souls, enter into their energies, they're frightening for devils. Their light is a light of truth and the devil doesn't like to look into that light, he'd rather go somewhere else. So instead of spending your time trying to buy toilet paper, Spending your time posting all sorts of, corona this, corona that, corona this, it's going to spread like this, it's going to spread like that, here's a video of this, here's a video of that. It's showing that you have fear when you shouldn't be having fear. We use a thumbnail as a clickbait. If you put this coronavirus, 10,000 people will click on it but the talks have nothing to do with that. There's nothing to be worried about and to be running and, and have fearful of. But what we should be fearing is did we make that relationship? Did we breathe? Did we contemplate? Did we build our energy that are not just a, a little battery that going to die with any type of frequency that hits me? Or is my entire being generating and madad? And when I make the madad do I light up? Do I feel heated? Do I feel energized? Am I pulling from this reality and bringing within me? It's not what you know but it's the company of who you keep. It's not the knowledge of all these uh, death and corona, how it spreads and putting this and putting that, putting this. But are we understanding the madad that when we're loving and when we're praising and when we're making zikr and we're asking for madad? That this energy of Imam Ali Salam comes like no force, second to Sayyidina Muhammad And an ihtiram and a respect that Allah made Imam Ali Salam the, the, the lion of Allah the sword of Allah There's no sword like the sword of Imam Ali Salam. When we're doing these nasheeds and spreading this love and working for this love, 
There's an energy that comes like no other energy. And tapping into that energy when you learn how to meditate and learn how to breathe, continuously making your madad, continuously in this ocean of power that as soon as you connect you feel yourself heated up. As soon as the zikrs begin their presence is there but not talking about their physical, their spiritual presence with lights and energies that are coming. And say that your madad to be upon me, your soul to be all encompassing around me. And all whom you love and they love you, they accompany that light and now they accompany me. All of that was to show the character Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, as Siddiq al Mutlaq, that come and give your madad and your support, the character that Prophet loves so much of your truthfulness and your immense generosity. What Sayyidina Bakr as Siddiq was the immense love and compassion for Prophet with these noble souls of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. When you're making madad, when we're doing the zikr and the associations, what type of lights they're dressing our soul? That they come into our being, they come into our light, they come into our home. Our homes become maqams of their love, they become caves of their love. Because we're there, we eat there, we sleep there. All their light is there, all their light is around us. Now you may be worried because maybe you don't think like I'm talking and that may be your fault. But if you think like how I talk, you should have no fear. If you feel that love, you feel that presence, you feel you did the best and continuously doing the best you can from what Allah has given to you and that you are earnestly working to build your energy and to feel the energy, now is the payday. Allah is distributing. That don't think this nation of Sayyidina Muhammad has been left alone to just perish and be possessed. When these energies are going out and the khalwa is ordered, what's happening to someone? Did they give themselves to truth or did they give themselves to falsehood? This is now the dividing ocean of black and white, now everything was grey. You don't know where people are on the spectrum of good and bad. Allah said, we're going to make it very clear. Everybody go to your room and in your room who did you want to accompany in your life? Those that were of a very negative frequency all their life, negative, 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 they should be seeing in their isolation every type of negativity and they're about to come out and ravage things. They're not coming out happy, this is just phase one. Those whom went into their isolation and they fell more in love that they realized everything that was taught is 100% true. Every type of difficulty that's why they were prepared. Every type of difficulty that's why they supported. Now their faith increased and every zikr they're feeling all the presence of these beings that are coming with madad, coming with support and they say, you're almost about to see us and our zuhur to come through. Now what was grey clearly will become black and white. Those who did their khalwa for shaitan, they come out as a shaitan. Those whom did their khalwa for Rahman, that they're isolating and they, they understood what Rahman wants. If you think you're going to go into isolation and come against Prophet you're actually his ba shaitan. You're going to come out with an anger and bad character you can't imagine. The people of Rahman, they have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad They were taught to be weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. And they should be very happy with the dress that Allah dressing them, blessing them 
means then the grey will go and black and white will be clear and the ones in the middle who don't know they were there or here, they are the ones in most difficulty now. Like the movie that we, we had on, what was that movie? I don't, what was the movie? They had the guy who had that like black serpent, he was battling, the venom. serpent was coming on venom. a venom. Yeah. And what was the nice Spider-Man had his alter ego, why Allah released all this marketing for people? And Allah loves his creation. It's not, oh I only prefer the Muslims, I'm only going to teach them. I'm going to teach all my creation. Did you see venom? How you're fighting with the black tar, you're fighting with your worst desires. What was birdcage teaching? That they said it six months ago, now it's here. The concept of the movie, something was released and everybody was ordered to their home, seal up your windows. Those were, who were insane to begin with, they loved it. Because they had already given themselves to the evil and they came out as extreme evil. The ones in the middle who didn't know whether they were good or bad, if they looked the power of evil was overwhelming and they succumbed to their evilness and the evil nature of their character was shown to them and they would do wicked things. Because playing the middle, someone who walks the middle fence usually just falls right here. Bink, and it hurts. Either you're on good or you're on bad, nobody walks the center line. And that's what happened in the movie, that's what Allah was showing in, in the marketing. That if you're playing the middle, what's going to happen is this negative energy is so overwhelming, all the wickedness of your character will come out. And that's why these awliya were mocking, look they're more worried about toilet paper than food. They're more focused on their rear than on their mouth. What tells you of a people who focus more on their rear end than their mouth for survival? Those whom look for signs, do they see the signs? While well, they're showing, look, look what these people are, are concerned about. Now they can't eat and they want to sell it. They're offering food in exchange for this paper. So it means in your understanding the people who went into Kharbar, what was the condition? Those who went for the, the benefit of Allah to be dressed and blessed, they know Allah is going to take care of them, give them a little bit of food, some supplies, we're good. Allah will multiply the rest with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So we understand now that this energy is coming and this battle of energy has begun. Those whom are wicked are about to come out very bad. Those who are good and they have love, they should come out very blessed. And the rest in the middle are suffering and they give themselves towards negativity and every bad desire. So this is a a battle of building energy. This is an understanding that, how can I take my low frequency and go over the top to the high frequency? You can't do it by yourself because you're nobody to do that. That's why, La ilaha anta subhanika inni kuntum min al dhalimeen. That was the first door of this way. I admitted to myself, I'm weak and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal ya rabbi. I am your weakest one, let their mother to dress me. So this was a way of humility that if I admitted to myself my nothingness, God's support would be upon me. And I'm entirely relying upon this support, God don't let me down, why would He let us down if we, that's really what we want? Then we understood then the mother, the zikrs, the love for these holy souls, they push us over the top. Who can be burned when the love of Imam Ali is in their heart? Said, so even if you have a thousand skins, if you don't have that love, you're gonna burn. Burn what? By this energy that's coming now. They burn people with the energy. As soon as they describe this newscaster who put himself in isolation and he wanted to describe the whole thing, last night he got attacked. 
He said he was having hallucinations, crazy dreams and then all night he was being beaten because he doesn't understand what these jinn are doing and they're trying to possess people. And they go into the cell of the human body and they make it all to be diseased. And since they don't believe in anything spiritual they open the body and they say, it's all diseased. And their whole medicine and philosophy is about fixing the form and the disease of the form. And Islam came to perfect the faith. They were in a state of ignorance and jahiliyyah and Islam came to enlighten the world that this disease you're looking at its cause and nature is energy and there are energy beings that God created. If they merely touch and hold your leg they can shut down the entire vascular system of a body. They enter into the body they go after the heart, they enter into a body they go after the lungs, they enter into a body and go after the liver and the kidneys. All of these are a function of their energy moving towards the body. So when we understood we're weak Ya Rabbi, do your madad. Allah created us weak and we accepted the trust. And Allah said, you are of an ignorant nature, how could you accept the trust when you are the weakest of the creation? And all that Allah came into our life and teach but Allah loves you the most. He gave a najat and this najat is to take a path of humility, I'm nothing and madad. Asking for the nazar and madad of Allah madad of Prophet madad of Imam Ali madad of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, madad of all these holy souls and mashaykh al-kiram and all our beloved shaykhs, they're madad and we took away in a life of continuously being in madad, continuously being in wudu, continuously asking that protect me and shield me with these lights of what Allah has dressed upon you. And that you fight my battle for I'm a weak servant of Allah Those whom passed they have an immense power, immense power. That Allah whatever Allah gave to you guard me, what Allah gave to you bless me for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad because I'm Ahbab and Nabi That don't disappoint Prophet that I asked and you didn't help me. So they teach a whole system on how to connect. And Allah running a test now, all of this that coming onto this earth, this is an energy battle. It's only najat is to build your energy, build your connection, hold tight and don't separate. There's no need for anyone to come into an area and take a group of people and begin to separate them so that they become like lost ships into an ocean. But whom Allah gave to you, hold tight to them, hold tight, make your madad, do your spiritual practices, breathe and bring your energy and reach to Sultan al-Nasira. Are you reaching and do you feel that you reach to the threshold of Sayyidina Muhammad Then every night you should be crying, if I'm not at your threshold who's going to protect my household when they start to come towards my home? When the energy starts to be overtaking every direction. So then it's motivating every night meeting ta tafakkur and contemplation and seeing ourselves at the threshold and the holy feet of Sayyidina Muhammad Madad Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem Ya Habib Al Azim. I'm weak servant, bad servant, sinful servant but I love you. Dress me from your muhabbah, dress me from your love, inspire my heart what is dearest to you so that I can show my love. And that's why then the akhlaq we talked about nights before. If you truly believe this and you're putting your head at the sandal of Prophet it's very clear for you what to do. You're asking for his support and what does he want? Then show him the love. That your whole life for that love, that everything he gave to you for that love, the time that you have for that love everything to show the magnificent, munificent status of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And then you have the nazar of Prophet and you should feel good. And even if you are weakened and destined to die, eh, no, nothing could be better, you are shaheed and be raised 
at the table of Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding on how to build the energy. Don't be focused on the material understanding, they don't even understand all of the paranoias and fears and, 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 and uh, sickness. And remember that this energy curve in our life, our life from the time of the beginning to the horse and buggy was a straight line. Anybody with science go back and look at it. How much we invented on this earth and how much we changed from the cowboys to the horse and the buggy, flat line. As soon as the jinn were allowed to enter into the earth and begin to enslave mankind again to be worshipped and to be taken as lords, that was called electricity. And that spike went like this, whoo, from horse and buggy nothing had changed for 200 years. They were riding on horses and swords, nothing changed. What changed then? As soon as electricity came, this line went up. As soon as that line up, how many diseases came onto this earth? What happened when they introduced radio signals worldwide? What happened when they introduced radar signals worldwide? What happened when they introduced all of their internet and 5G signals worldwide? Means it's an energy attack against insan for the enslavement of insan. We pray that Allah grant us a najat and a safety and grant us these lights and these energies and understanding of these energies inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. If you understood every sickness was an energy, then every remedy would have been a sound. Ismahu dawas wa zikruhu shafas. If they understood that every sickness is something attaching itself. So then a, a zikr and a du'a of a zikr is an immense remedy to this sickness because the frequency could shatter that which is attaching itself of negative energies upon insan. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.